What up, Battle? Old 64 here. Thanks for clicking on my YouTube channel again. Today, it's time for FAA. Not planes or cows. Flags of our American ancestors. We're going to go ahead and cover this high-speed Washington Cruisers flag. I know you've seen it in the modern world. Let's talk a little bit about it. We had talked about the Continental flag in the Battle of Bunker Hill flag. This flag is properly known as the Washington Cruisers flag. It refers to the warships that George Washington funded with money from his own pocket for the Revolutionary War. On September 2nd, 1775, George Washington hired a schooner called Hannah that was owned by the parents of Colonel John Glover. Later during the war, six more schooners were commissioned. The Franklin, the Hancock, the Lynch, the Washington, the Lee, and the Harrison. Here we see a sketch of a floating battery. George Washington commissioned two floating batteries on the Charles River that laid siege to the city of Boston that was occupied by the British. While none of the historic Washington Cruisers flags exist to this day, there are accounts in writings and letters from the era that mention the Washington Cruisers flag. On October 20th, 1775, there was a letter written by Joseph Reed, seen here, who was a Washington aide and a future governor of Pennsylvania. He wrote the letter to Colonel John Glover, the captain of the Hannah. He says in part, we have accounts that the small squadron which sailed some time ago is bombarding Fulmouth and Portsmouth. Our vessels must be careful how they fall in with them. Please to fix some particular color for a flag and a signal by which our vessels may know one another. What do you think of a flag with a white ground, a tree in the middle, the motto, Appeal to Heaven? This is the flag of our floating batteries. Interestingly, the indefinite article, or the word and, shouldn't be included on the flag, as we heard in a letter from Joseph Reed. Here we see a portrait of Dr. Joseph Warren. We talked about him in a previous video when we saw the picture, The Death of General Warren, at the Battle of Bunker Hill. After the battles of Lexington and Concord, which were the first military engagement of the Revolutionary War, Joseph Warren sent a letter to the inhabitants of Great Britain. It was on April 26, 1775. It reads in part, These brethren are marvels of ministerial vengeance against this colony for refusing with her sister colonies a submission to slavery. But they have not yet detached us from our royal sovereign. We profess to be his loyal and dutiful subjects, and so hardly dealt with, as we have been, are still ready with ourselves and fortunes to defend his person, family crown, and dignity. Nevertheless, to the persecution and tyranny of his cruel ministry, we will not tamely submit. Appealing to heaven for the justice of our cause, we determine to die or be free. Well, Battle, I don't know about you, but I recognized a couple of familiar passages in that letter that Joseph Warren wrote to the inhabitants of Great Britain. The term appeal to heaven was used by the American colonists because it was used even earlier, in 1690, by the English philosopher John Locke in his second treatise of government that reads in part, the people have no other remedy in this as in all other cases where they have no judge on earth but to appeal to heaven. For the rulers in such attempts exercising a power the people never put into their hands. So we know why the early American colonists used the term appeal to heaven, but why did the pine tree appear so prominently on early American flags? In addition to the reasons I gave you in a previous video, it's interesting to know that before the Boston Tea Party even happened, on April 13th, 1772, in Ware, New Hampshire, there was a pine tree riot. There was a sheriff of Hillsborough County, Mr. Benjamin Whiting, and his deputy, John Quigley, 
that were beaten with switches by 20 men led by Ebenezer Mudgett. He was a chief perpetrator charged with milling pine logs that were marked with the British broad arrow mark that were intended for the king's use. As early as October 7th, 1691, at the Massachusetts Bay Colony, in their charter, there was a mass preservation clause dictating that trees with a diameter of over 24 inches were intended for use only by the king and the Royal Navy. These tall straight logs were needed for single stick masts in the Royal Navy, which means that the mast was hewn from one tree versus fastening two or more logs together with wooden pegs. The single stick masts were far superior and able to withstand the full gale during heavy seas. These trees were vital to the early American colonists. Scientifically known as Pinus strobus, or the eastern white pine, these trees may have grown up to 230 feet tall in the 18th century. Currently, the Bogerman pine is the tallest eastern white pine. It's located in the Smoky Mountains National Park in Tennessee. It was measured by the Eastern National Tree Service in 2008 to be 188 feet tall. Scientists determine that it's 177 years old as of 2020. That means it was planted in 1845. It's 11 and a half feet wide at the trunk. So, Battle, what do you think? I hope you consider liking and subscribing with the notification bell on. I think it's important that we know about the flags that we see in day-to-day -day life. This is one of my favorite ones. I wear it on my tactical cap often. Make sure that you make a comment down below. See you next time, Battle.